Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving and today we're going to start weaving on the Diamonds and Bars Twill Rug. So in the last video I did the twining that is going to be on the uh, hem, on the edge of the hem and I haven't decided exactly what type of a hem I'm going to be doing. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be doing a fringe because my husband hates fringes. So uh, I'll probably do a full Damascus and then I'll bury the ends. But I thought the twining would look good. So I went ahead and did that. It also helps spread your warp. Um, so I've done the border portion of the weaving. And that was fairly simple. It was just a, uh, a treadling of one through four over and over for a couple inches. And now we're gonna start on the pattern. So this pattern requires using three shuttles at the same time. And there are three different colors. There are four treadles that are being used, however. So keeping track of the color sequence and the treadling sequence can be a little bit challenging but we can handle that. So there are three colors. So I have three shuttles. I have the black and I have the natural and then I have the green, the moss. Now I only have uh, one large boat shuttle, so which would be preferable to use uh, since this is kind of a more of a worsted weight yarn. Um, but my end feed shuttles are, can do the job. Um, this end feed shuttle is a modern end feed shuttle. Uh, it's a sachet and very nice uh, shuttle. This is a fly shuttle. It is also an end feed shuttle, but you'll notice that it has steel tips on the ends. And this is designed to be shot back and forth across your warp with a mechanical means. Um, so there's usually a box on either end with either, well, for home uh, weaving, it's usually a spring, but industrial weaving, it's usually uh, air. So this is a much heavier shuttle. Um, it's made for going over long distances. And I, I think this is an antique um, industrial shuttle. Uh, but it's very heavy and it is very dangerous because these points on the end are very sharp. Um, and I have hardwood floors and my husband will kill me if this falls on the hardwood floor and damages it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down uh, pads uh, under my loom so that if this does dive through the warp and hit the floor, it's not going to hurt the floor. Um, if it does dive through the warp, I will be pulling my feet out from under the loom very quickly because it would probably break your foot. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that and then we will get started with the weaving. Okay, so now we're set up and ready to start our weaving. So when working with three shuttles, um, you need to keep them in the order that they're going to be used. Uh, that way you only have to worry about the treadling. You don't have to worry about which color you should be picking up, even though I have that marked on my pattern. So I've got the, the black border here set up and I've got my temple installed. And we're going to start with the natural first and then the moss and then the black. We'll go uh, to a turning point in the pattern and you'll start to see it uh, emerge at, when I start weaving with the colors. But at the turning point, we will reverse the colors uh, somewhat. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I will start with the natural. And we'll go ahead and tuck our tail. We're going to leave a generous 
angle on the weft. Because this is a weft faced weave, um, and we want to minimize the amount of draw in. Okay. So when I throw the shuttle across, I'm going to put the shuttle on the bench next to me in the same position that it came off of the bench here. So it's going to go from the top. So I'm going to go from the top to the bottom or closest to me and then I'm going to weave the same way on this side. That way I always know I'm using the colors in the correct order. So I am going to move my temple, um, and it's going to be critical that I move my temple often uh, because the draw in, the tendency for this to draw in is really uh, great. Alright, so I've completed my first uh, segment of repeat and now I'm going to do eight repeats of one, two, three. And I'm going to continue to use the same color sequence. This is my turn uh, set. Instead of picking up the natural on this side, I'm going to pick up the uh, moss color and I'm going to treadle the opposite way that I was treadling. So you can start to see the pattern appear. And I am out of the natural. So I will go ahead and um, wind a, another pern of that. Okay, so we have our uh, new bobbin filled. So we will continue on with 
our pattern. And that is the end of our first repeat. So you can see the pattern emerging and we'll just continue on and advancing our uh, warp and our temple and um, keeping track of our shuttles like we've been doing. And next thing you know, we'll have a full-fledged rug. So we're going to, uh, since we're starting our repeat over, uh, we're going to switch the color sequence back to the natural green and black. Okay, I got out of sequence. So we're going to back up <laughs> and it's quite easy to, to do this, to get out of sequence when you're um, working with three shuttles. So it's critical that you just kind of keep an eye on it and um, Check frequently. And I will just back through until I get to where I know it's correct. So that, that one is correct, and the next one is correct, going back, so. Alright, so we are back to our original, um, we're back to the third uh, repeat. So I thought it might be helpful if I showed you an overhead view and you can see how I keep track of my shuttles and the colors. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start the next repeat of the pattern. And you'll notice that uh, this was the ending sequence of the repeat. So I have the green, the white, and the black. 
So when I start the new sequence, I'm going to start with the white. Boxer, what are you doing? So I'm going to move that over to there so that I am sure to pick the right one. Now I ran out of weft on the white, so we're going to go ahead and feed this end through manually. <clears throat> Oh, hi, this is my little weaving buddy, Boxer. <laughs> what are you doing, huh? <clears throat> and it's a little challenging to weave with a cat on your lap, but we manage. <clears throat> is it not uh, weaving time, huh? Playtime. Okay. <clears throat> then I take the green. <laughs> now, <laughs> it's really hard to bet to do this. It is. Can you come down here? We might not be getting any weaving done today. Come on, there you go. Good kitty. You make this very challenging because goodness knows we can't just throw you off. Sir, can you move?
then I am back to the beginning. So while I'm changing the temple, I'm going to go ahead and check my beat. So I know that the repeat goes from uh, the middle of one diamond to the middle of the other diamond. And I don't want to measure here because this will continue to pack in as I uh, weave. So I like to measure uh, in the middle of where I've been weaving. So let's just, oh, what? So the pattern calls for one repeat to be about uh, 1.7 inches. And this is probably right exactly that. So, um, it takes a lot of effort to beat this hard, but we are getting there. Boxer, do you want to go out? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Huh? Okay. Now, since I am back at the beginning of the repeat, I need to switch my colors again so that the white is the first pick. the diamonds and bar twill run. So now I'm going to uh, do the twining on this end and then I'll put in a short header and uh, cut it off the loom. I hope you enjoyed watching me weave this rug. It's been an experience for me and uh, quite the workout, but I really like the way that it looks and um, can't wait to see it on my floor. In my next video, I will show you how to do a full Damascus uh, edge, and then I'll bury the uh, warp threads in the rug, and you won't even be able to see them. So if you did enjoy watching me weave this rug, please do give the video a thumbs up, and consider subscribing to my channel so you get notification when I release future videos. Thanks, and happy weaving.